here we are at the Naughty Threads, this wonderful little gallery in the heart of Fulford Village in the south end of Salt Spring Island. This is where people would take the ferry over to Schwartz Bay and people would arrive from Schwartz Bay to Fulford Harbour. So we're going in to meet Jane McKenzie. McKenzie, and we're in the Naughty Threads and this is the wonderful studio part. Yeah of the Naughty Threads and Jane yeah. McKenzie is a fiber artist and she's wearing one of her amazing, amazing shawl scarves. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's interesting, I came across your work when you were selling it on Granville Island and oh, I was in okay. love with it then and then when yeah. I found out you were here on Salt Spring, it was like, oh my goodness, yeah. we, what a coup for Salt Spring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there was a group of us working on in Granville Island, that, oh. that was a co-op. Oh, okay. So I think there was four or five weavers there at that time. Oh, right. And that's actually where I learned to weave. Yeah. yeah. Oh, in that co-op? Well, I learned you? to weave originally in high school. Yes. I had a very unusual uh, Hungarian high school teacher yes. who made us naturally dye wool and do all these samples and then weave yardage. She had very high expectations of us. Oh, my. And uh, we had a choice of pottery and or weaving, and I really wanted to do the pottery, and she made me do the weaving. Uh -huh. And I was so mad about that, but when I actually did it, I absolutely loved it. Oh, did you ever go so, back to pottery? Mm. So this amazing high school teacher, mm -hmm. you got to dye the, was it wool? What fabric It was wool that we worked with, and uh -huh. we used natural dyes that she had collected for us. Oh, and she was from Hungary. She came out of Hungary in the Revolution, and she had been a fashion designer. I'm not sure how she came to Canada, but she was very eccentric, very yes. inspiring, mm -hmm. and loved art. And oh. she, you know, she took some of us under her wing. What an and this was in Cloverdale in Surrey, in where, Clo and how, where so there's not much else going on yeah. except for the rodeo. So you grew up in, in Vancouver area? Well, I grew up all over Canada. I grew up mostly in the prairies, okay. but I went to high school. Yeah. In, in Surrey, yeah. yeah. And so this was your foundation? The, it think. was. Yeah. That was the that was the beginning. Oh. Yeah. And have you stuck with a lot of what she taught you? Do you still do a lot of the dyeing? Oh, I do all the dyeing. Yeah. I do all the dyeing now. Where do, you, where do you get the dyes from? Most of the dyes I get from my wa, mm -hmm. um, which is a place in Ben. Know you know my wa, well. right? Yeah. She has oh, yeah. all the My wa, I'm workshops. there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she has so my wa is a wonderful shop in Granville Island, and she collects a lot of the wonderful Indian block prints from India she goes every year yeah and uh, I know she gets into a lot of the fiber arts and the dyes yeah she's done really a lot to support local artisans and artisans in in India mm -hmm. so she her source of dyes are really good mm -hmm. she gets light fast dyes so I stick with those the local dyes that I use are Queen Anne's Lace, Goldenrod, Tansy mm -hmm. and um, those grow mostly on the side of the road so at a certain time of year, I'll go and I'll pick those, and yeah. then I get a beautiful yellow kind of green Maybe color. Maybe we can talk with you about that when, when you start to do some harvesting, because I'd love mm. to see how all of that is done. Mm -hmm. That would be a wonderful mm -hmm. talk just on its own. So after you've uh, collected the dyes, and uh, then you start to do the soaking of the wool and create the dyes, mm -hmm. and then you produce, then do you, are you actually buying the wool raw? Well, I buy silk. I, mm -hmm. I work now with silk, mm -hmm. so I buy my, most of my silk from Trinway here, here on the island. Mm -hmm. Trinway, um, they go to India and China, I think both places, and buy silk. Mm -hmm. And um, they're really a wholesale order place or mail order. Yes, so but it's out of Salt Spring. It's on Salt Spring, yeah. yeah. And then I also buy from Eva Chris the silk tree. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of her yarns are spun in Italy. Oh, and nice. uh, so I get uh, many different types of yarns. I don't just use one, but I've got boucles and um, ner you know really thin and thicker, um, mm -hmm. plied, unplied. So these are raw yarns, and then you're dyeing them. And then I'm dyeing them, yeah. Yeah. And you said you're primarily working in silk. So Pretty you had much. Use some wool. I'm just starting to play around a little bit with wool because somebody has lent me this sari loom here, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's faster, I'm learning, mm -hmm. <laughs> with wool than using the really, really fine silk. Yeah. So So this is your main loom, yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so how many threads would you have on this loom? This one is about 20 ends per inch. But when I'm doing, the, this is a plain weave and it, it becomes a collapse, mm -hmm. but when I'm doing a twill, the painted shawls, which mm -hmm. are a denser weave, they would be about 36 ends per inch. Mm. And what are you wearing right now? This is a twill. Okay. Um, 
This is a little silk. bit of a looser, and this is all silk, and this is all natural dyes. Oh my god! So it's so it's <clears throat> warm, but it's light. Yeah, I mean it's a really all season. Shawl, it really is, is. Yeah, you can wear it pretty much. You can if if you've got a shawl, you can wear it beautifully in the summer, and then wrap it around mm -hmm. um, for a winter yeah. wear. It's great. Yeah. And I notice this gorgeous pin. Yes. You're making these. <laughs> well, I've been looking for pins to put mm -hmm. on my shawls for a long time. And um, I've approached a couple of um, jewelers and could never find quite the right thing. And then uh, in the fall, we went to San Diego and I stumbled across an Alexander Calder show of his jewelry. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away by how rough but beautiful they were. And I mm -hmm. thought that's the kind of thing I want yeah. to put on my work. And so um, somebody suggested that I take a course with Martinus, a weekend course, so that's what He's I did. He's an islander, Martinus. He yeah. is an islander. He's yeah. a wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I made, this was my first attempt. Yeah. So this is silver, silver and brass. It's all forged. And so now I'm going to be working Monday evenings with him. He opens his workshop to, for use on Monday evenings yes. for people that want to use it. So yeah. I'll be doing more work there. So is this one of the first pieces? Yeah, this this is... This is the very first This piece. the second. The first one was a big copper oh. spiral, but this oh. is... Are yeah. you going to be selling them to them? I would like to sell them. Wow. That would be great. Yeah. And is it pins primarily? Or are you working into I earrings think, and bracelets? I think mostly that? maybe bracelets, but I, I'm just going to focus on pins yeah. for this year. I've really got enough going. with your weaving? It does. Yeah, yeah. it's a good... They work well together. Yeah, well, they really do. <laughs> it is such a Celtic design. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah it, but yet it's raw, just as you said. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. But going back to the weaving, mm -hmm. I mean, I am in love, and I think it's the plaids. I love mm -hmm. the plaids that mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. And where do you come up with these ideas? Well, oh gosh. Um, actually, the, the, the pieces that sell the best, which is on the loom right now, um, and our a, a version of this, but with a collapse. Yes. I actually stumbled across that design by trying to use up because I was working in a co-op, mm -hmm. and I had borrowed some bobbins. I had to take all my yarn off the bobbins. Yes. So I did this design. I thought, oh, when I put it on the loom, I thought, oh my God, this is the most horrendous thing I've ever done. This is never going to work. Mm -hmm. But I thought, well, I'll just weave it and see what happens. Well, I had it on the counter. I, I had just taken it off the loom and washed it and finished it, and somebody bought it. And so I just started, they liked it. So I thought, oh, man, maybe I'm onto something here. So I started playing around with colors and stuck with the natural dyes. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is the colors are vibrant, but they're not so intense, and they all work together. But there's a whole variety of colors, so no one stands out. So people can buy them as gifts because yeah. they don't yeah. have to choose one color and know that that's yeah. going to work oh, for yeah. that person. Yeah. And yet they each have their personality. Yeah. I mean, I was fondling quite a few in there yeah. and everyone had its own kind of whisper. Yeah. yeah, they're all one of a kind for sure they, because I can never duplicate no. what I've done. Yeah. yeah. I'm just interested, I wonder if we can just talk for a moment about the Celtic look behind mm -hmm. this. We see it in your pin, I see it in the plaids. Mm -hmm. Do you have a relationship <coughs> with Jane McKenzie? <laughs> Big relationship with the Celtic past? Uh, well, I do, I guess. I mean, I'm first generation Canadian, mm -hmm. so, and my grandmother was very inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated from art school, I took a bike and I rode my bike around Scotland, you know, mm -hmm. to go back to my roots, roots. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I met a very amazing weaver woman. Her name was Marion Campbell, and she was living in the Outer Her Hebrides. Mm -hmm. And, she, you know, the Outer Hebrides produces the Harris Tweed. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the last weavers that was working on one of the mm -hmm. big old wooden looms. Yeah. And I was staying at a youth hostel, and the guy there, I asked him I wanted to go and look at some things, and he said, well, why don't you go visit Marion? So I did, and I spent the afternoon with her, and she was in her 70s. And she was using all natural dyes. The local villagers would collect the dyes for her because mm -hmm. she was too old to do that. She would dye them. She worked, actually, what's funny, she worked on a corrugated shed right next to the ocean. Wow. And her, her, her yardage was just so beautiful. And people came from all over the world wow. to buy her yeah. work. And this just perchance. <clears throat> And I just thought, wow, this woman, you know, look at, she's doing this and she's in her 70s. What a great, powerful thing to yeah. do. And and she'd accumulated all this. And keep this tradition alive. Yeah. So I think that was really, really inspiring. Mm -hmm.
and for me, for I'm sure. I'm so happy you had that experience, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're here on Salt Spring, mm -hmm. and all of those things make up who you are today. Mm -hmm. So these are some of your scarves. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about this particular kind of scarf, where you've got this mm -hmm. beautiful uh, pressed side, and then you've got this amazing accordion. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all silk, and um, it's what's called collapse weave. So when I put a particular kind of yarn in here, in the collapse part, which I haven't done in the skirt part, after I take it off the loom and wash it, the yarn is a very high twist yarn and it twists in on itself. And if there's room between the warp threads, it will gather. So this particular twisted thread is a high um, hand reeled high twist from Japan. Yeah, These are really see. fun yeah, to do. Good. These, um, I make the warp out of all natural silks and then I had created this elaborate process where I spread it out over two doors on sawhorses and I take my brush and I dip the brush in the dyes and I paint the warp. Then I let it dry, then I put it on the loom and I weave the weft, generally with a solid color, like that one is a solid color, but these I've used stripes just to kind of make it interesting. Um, so these are not natural dyes, but they're, they're, so you can see the colors are a little bit more acidic, like they're a, a brighter vibration color. Mm -hmm. um, but they're so fun to weave because I never know exactly how they're going to turn out because the dyes dry differently and the wash of color, like I've blended colors, mm -hmm. and it's always a, a surprise. So, yeah. but these are about 20 hours worth of work. They're very labor intensive. They're absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. They're great for like a summer shawl or a scarf, like I yeah. was saying before, for winter. Yeah. Yeah. And they're very flattering. If you get the right color for oh, your yeah, face, they're, they're very yeah, flattering. They're soft at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful to wear. Mm -hmm. I bet they last forever. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're and again, they're hand washable. Yeah. You iron hand, them. You hand these down. This is a generation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Hmm. So in the gallery, you represent quite a few other artists. Mm -hmm. um, I see that you've got jewelry <coughs> and you've got some of the wonderful soap makers on the island and some of the other potters. I hope that inspires people because um, making things with our hands and seeing how that's done, I think is really important that we remember the connection between the person and the product mm -hmm. because so much is mass produced. And I think uh, Salt Spring really allows us to see that, that connection, partly with the studio tour. So that's great. Thank you very much, Jane. Mm -hmm.